Okay, this is, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to explain this. Uh, this is about the pole transformer and the three wire system. Now, yeah, I got a pretty crummy drawing up there. I'm just not very good at drawing this stuff. But let me kind of go over this diagram and let's see if I can uh, get you through this thing. This would be the pole transformer right here. Now we're primarily concerned with the secondary winding. Secondary winding has got three taps. It's got one on this side, a neutral in the center, or center tap, and 120 volts on this side. And if I went from this side here and went to here, I would get 240. Okay, I've laid this sine wave over it too to kind of give you an idea of how the sine wave works with the transformer and the panel. Okay, up here I got L1, neutral, and L2. Now I'm going to be putting loads between these things. And I want to tell you what I think the loads are going to do when they are placed between there. If I go from L1 right here to neutral, I get 120. And that's this winding right here. Now this is all one winding, but it is center tap. So it's halfway in, so I get 120 volts to here. If I go from here to here, I get the same thing. I get 120 volts to the center. And of course, if I go from L1 to L2, I get 240. Now you can see the sine wave is up at 120 volts. Now I've drawn the peak of the sine wave in line with L1. And I've drawn the peak of the negative sine wave in line with L2. Because this is, this is going to be positive 120 at the same time this is going to be negative as 120. This is always going to be 0 volts. That's the neutral. So let's look at how this would work if I put loads in here. Let's say I put a load from L2 to neutral. Okay, the negative 120 volts is going to try to get over to the positive 120 volts, but it doesn't have a direct way there. It can go to the neutral, which is going to go down here to zero volts, and of course that's going to give me you know, there's a difference, a potential difference, 120 to 0. So it is going to go there. And it'll go to the 0 voltage here. It actually wants to go over to here. But the only way to get there would be go through the windings. So we get 120 volts right there. And let's say I have a 15 amp load across here. So I'm going to read... 15 amps from uh, on L2. If I go to neutral, then uh, check the amperage on neutral, I'm going to also have 15 amps. Now, if I also have a 15 amp load between L1 and neutral, then I'm going to eliminate the neutral line. Because at this point, Power is passing here over to the neutral, and as I've said in other videos, it's kind of a gathering place to balance out the loads. So, if I have 15 amp load here, and I got a 15 amp load here, then the power is going to pass through here. It's going to hit the neutral, but it sees a way that it can get to the other side, the positive 120 volts. Remember, I was negative 120 volts here, and so it wants to go there more than it wants to go to the neutral because there's more potential difference. I've got a total of 
potential difference of 240 here and 120 here. So it's not going to go back the neutral. Like both these loads, they're not going to go to here and then neutral or here and then neutral. They are going to bypass the neutral completely and go to the other side because there's more potential difference. Remember, 240 volts. Now, if I unbalance this load and I put two 15 amp loads here, let's say I got a 15 amp load from here to here, another 15 amp load from here to here. Okay, I'm going to draw 30 amps on this line here. Now, I've still got a 15 amp load here. So, I'm going to have the 15 amp load here. One of the 15 amp loads here are going to go to the neutral, going to go through the other load, and go to that peak on the other side. However, I've got an imbalance here. I've got 15 amp load here and a 15 amp load here. This 15 amp load can't go to here. There's no way for it to go there because there's too much resistance in the load. The load's a 15 amp load. It's not going to take any more amperage. So it goes back to neutral. Remember, 120 volts here, negative, will go to neutral because there's a potential difference. So we, we are imbalanced at this point. I, if I checked amps here, I'd get 30 amps. If I checked amps here, I'd get 15 amps, and I would get 15 on the neutral. Now, I'm purposely not showing a ground in here because ground has nothing to do with this. Ground is not really involved in the power. It's a place for spikes to go, for odd electrical things that happen, lightning and so on like that to go. Uh, but the neutral is where everything's returning to. So, I don't know if this is going to make any sense to you, but if you consider that the the potential difference between this side of 120 negative to 120 positive, which is 240 volts, it's going to try to go over here if there's a path. If the path creates too much resistance to take all the amperage from this side that's going from here, uh, L1 to neutral, or L2 to neutral, and uh, if there's too much amperage there, then the neutral is going to take it because it's the only way to get back. It's the only way to go from 120 volts to something that doesn't have as much potential on that side. Remember, everything 120 negative is going to go to 120 positive if it possibly can. But if it can't get there, it'll go from 120 negative to zero. Now, does this make any sense to you? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to reference a few other videos I did on this stuff, and I welcome comments on, uh, on my work.